legs crossed, back straight, eyes closed, breathing in through our noses and out through our mouth. Bringing our energy in control, our thoughts in control. any given moment in time, we take control of our breathing, we take control of our thoughts. So right now, let's see ourselves, let's see it in our minds so clearly that it feels real. Let's see ourselves doing the best we can on all the exercises and stretches and movements we do today together. Feel the power of that determination, your determination, your power to determine, to take control of your breathing, your mind, your body, and your life. same power we can use to control our destiny, our future. See, you are so powerful, you get to go into the future. You get to see in your mind what you want to bring out into the world and make real. Right here, right now, in the present, greatest gift we have, always. So let's go, determination, let's go. Determine, see it in your mind, don't choose and lose, determine and win, see it in your mind doing the best you can, not just here and now, but always in the gym of life. You grow your mind all the time.
Mateo. Pedro. Messi. Goal for Lionel Messi. Good morning, guys. I remember hearing Tony Robbins in one of his videos a long time ago say that there are six psychological needs, human needs that we all have. And the one that stood out for me was the one where he talks about this need for certainty, the need of knowing that everything is going to be okay. So we all have that. And I believe that one of the things that can improve our lives immensely is understanding some of the stresses, anxieties, worries, doubts, fears uh, that lead to, in some cases, addictions, addictions to food, sugar, uh, you name it, anything. We can become addicted to anything. But there's a great power in that addiction. And what it is, is I believe, is that we, we have a certainty. We know that if we do that thing, we're going to feel a certain joy, a pleasure. Well, I'm telling you that the greatest certainty we have is that we can use determination and that power and channel it to do something great. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for coming to hang out with all of us today. Uh, my wife later on is going to ask me, why are you in the, in the office yelling? And she'll know. She knows why, because I love what I do, and I get to be loud <laughs> and have a little conversation. Um, but here's the thing. I, 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 Brendan alludes to it, and it is something where, like, I didn't always have a mentality of, like, joy and happiness at the onset. At this point in time, I'm sometimes too happy for my own uh, good in my household. <laughs> like, everybody doesn't get up at my level. And, and it's okay. Like, I, I have understood this is who I am, but it's been a journey to get here. I do know that a lot of us all have the moments in time where at some point in the past there was this uh, this moment that just really sucked like it was it was hard to navigate in the moment in time we didn't know how to navigate it and and it's interesting is that's how we actually get programmed i love when i, I saw the topic for us this week being uh, how to month how to reprogram for positivity because i'm like oh we get to dive into the identity stuff a little bit which is where i i love to hang out uh, for those of you guys who don't know my story, I'll kind of tell some stories today. I think that helps anchor kind of the concepts I'm going to teach you. Um, but brief, we'll call it the Reader's Digest version. For those of you guys who remember the Reader's Digest that used to sit in the back of grandma's toilet when you go in there and you open it up and you sit there. Anyways, we're going a little bit deep. But you know what I'm talking about? When I was a kid, I had uh, the situation where I was given away. Like at three years old, I was thrust into this world that was very uh, unforgiving, we'll call it. Didn't have a lot of greatness in, in, around my circle. Didn't experience great things. I did not have a positive mentality, nor did I have the, the, I guess, the makings of creating one? Like I just, I was put in a situation where I had to navigate it. And for most people, whenever you experience something that is, uh, it's unsettling at a really deep level, at a stable level, it is completely almost impossible to find the joy in it in the real time. Like all you see is this sucks and we stew in that, we stay in that. And it sucks because then what happens is we actually not just program our mindset for negativity, we program who we are. So when I talk to this today, I want you to kind of grasp that I have this, this perspective of connection to the, the the person you are, the identity of this, in a way it's a little bit deeper than simply like how I see my day and going, like there's a lot more depth to it. And so I tie it to identity. I wrote a book last year uh, that was called Identity Shift. And it's a, a book that I have grown to love even more than when I first wrote it. It's weird. Uh, when we had our, our thing going on, or we had our, our last group to get together in, in Napa, I was like, this is not the book, but it's a really good book. And Brendan goes, hold on, bro, just for a second. Just so you know, for them, it is the book. And I was like, oh, I feel bad in front of all these cool people. He made me feel bad, but it's a good feel bad. Because like, you know what? It was the great book when I wrote it, but I thought I learned more afterwards. And after it got out of the world and it's come back to me, we'll call from con like feedback. It's, it's incredibly cool what was in the book and what I'm finding out was even deeper than most people thought. But one of the sections that I, I want to speak to today is this kind of metaphor. One of the chapters is called computer, C-O-M-P-Y-O-U-T-E-R, computer, which means you as a computer. So I want to set the framing for today uh, in this aspect of essentially how we are programmed to begin with. Now, most of us don't think about this. We don't pay attention to it. However, we have these lives we're living and we can pay attention to the lives, outcomes we're having, and we don't always enjoy them. We want to have more positivity. We don't realize we can actually go to the root of something and adjust, I say, shift all of this. 
So let's, let's unpack this metaphor real quick. Then I want to go down the journey of understanding your brain, how this thing works, and how we all do things. So think of it like a, a computer has this thing we're using now. It has the hardware, right? I have my physical computer, my trackpad that I have. I got the keyboard, the mouse. You have a screen you're watching me on right now. And if you don't have the computer, you have a phone. Same kind of concept. Now you also have on this computer, the hardware, you have this these programs, right? So right now we're using Zoom to go back and forth. Some of you are on the Growth Day app. It's a program. You might also have the, the music program to play music you want to listen to, quick time to watch videos, right? These are all programs. You also happen to have files the program plays, right? So I have to have a music file for the program to play the music. I have to have a, a video camera giving feed so Zoom program can show me over here and you over there, right? There's different files that are going in and out completely. Now, all of these things seem seamless. They operate, but there's this little thing that's completely invisible in the background and we call it iOS for Mac, or you may call it Windows. It's an operating system. Now the operating system is invisible. No one's looking and going, oh, that's iOS. We just know that it allows the programs to be seen, files to be played, hardware to show it all. It all works great. So how does this tie to your life? Well, if you think about the computer, every once in a while, something happens where something kind of comes in the side of your corner of your screen. It's a little snooze button, like a little button that says, hey, do you want to upgrade this program or do this thing? And you go, ah, I'm busy right now. Let me go and push this away. Who has had that happen on their computer in the last like month or so? The little alert comes through. We got a hand up. You go, ah, I, I'm, I'm busy. I got to push this to the side. So we push it aside. We don't pay attention to it. Keep on doing our thing. And then a little bit later, all of a sudden, the computer might get a little bit slower. It might heat up a little bit. I see some definitely in the background. This little thing comes up again. Hey. Do you want to update this? There's new Mac OS, you know, princess available. Like, do you want that? Like, no, I, I'm still, I got to keep doing my thing. I'm too busy right now to be focused on the computer updating. But at some point in time, who knows, there's a moment when your computer just all of a sudden says, you know what, I'm done working. <laughs> I'm not gonna do this anymore. And the computer, it'll heat up and shut down. It'll freeze, it'll bog. You'll get the thing where you start something that keeps shutting down and you're like, what is going on? And you go, oh yeah, I got to update that thing. So what do you do? You go into the computer's operating system, click the button, you know, update this software, update this thing, and it updates. Now, what does it do? It takes some time. It'll say another one hour, 36 minutes remaining. You're like, oh my God, oh, I, what do I do in this? It's frustrating, right? But eventually it comes back. It's all updated. It's faster. It's quicker. You can do more. Like you feel like I can do what I want to do now and live life. We are the exact same way. Interestingly, like I look at it just like computers. We have hardware. This right here is our hardware. My, my hardware is my body. You have a physical body as well, a brain, right? You also have programs. You have a marriage. You have a career. You have um, hobbies you like to do. Those are your programs. You also have files, right? The books you read that come and make your life better. The food you eat that improves the hardware. Like there's these different pieces that are files, but there is something that allows it all to come together, which is your operating system. That operating system, it's your identity. It's who you are when you are not thinking about who you are. It's the thing that goes on the background that is, it's the instinctual gut reaction portion. In fact, it exists in a space where if you think about it, you actually can't pinpoint it. Neurologically, if they put these diodes on your brain and they ask you who you are, there's a part of your brain called the default mode network, the DMN. And that thing shuts down whenever you start thinking about who you are. Because what we do is you go, well, I'm my, I got a car and I'm, I'm a coach and I'm a speaker and I'm a, I'm a mom, I'm a dad, I'm a parent, I'm a, all these things. That's what I am. But that part, shuts down. Now, if I was to have you just sit there and daydream and look at things, it lights up. You all of a sudden, like when you start looking at the birds fly by and your body goes, I love birds. I love birds. Look at that beautiful bird, right? Or you, you, you walk outside and you can smell like the summertime or springtime and your brain goes, oh, I love this. You're not processing. It's just happening in real time. That, that energy or something happens and somebody cuts you off in traffic is an instinctual response that you have. Things just happen without you consciously thinking about it. That is in fact your identity showing up in real time and the identity has actions, it has habits, those create your life. Now, for a lot of us, unfortunately, we weren't paying attention to this. And so while in a computer, you can click the button and do whatever it is in our life, we were already programmed. Teachers, preachers, coaches, leaders, news, television, radio, friends, these different things were coming into our life. Sometimes subconsciously, we're being fed in, and they were programming the computer. And then what happens at a certain point in time in your life, you're running your life. And then people come to you and go, hey, you know what? You're, you're kind of a little bit rude. That, that button comes up. You go, oh, snooze that. I'm not trying to hear that from you. I don't want to hear that. That's, that's not making me feel good. I'm going to keep doing my thing.
and they keep doing your life. And all of a sudden, like you're in a relationship and then your partner says, hey, can you give me a little more time? I'll snooze. I don't got time for that. I got to work. I got to take care of the stuff. We keep snoozing all these alerts. Your body comes up, says, hey, you got a little high blood pressure. You know, you're a little bit heavier than you used to be. Maybe you see a doctor. No, nah, I snooze that. I got to keep focusing on work. I got stuff to do. I can't pay attention to that. And just like a computer, eventually things shut down. Now, a computer, it's a little different. You can boot it back up. But for us, when things shut down, they shut down hard. Hopefully, it's not the big shutdown, right? But sometimes it's a mental breakdown because I can't see joy or positivity. Sometimes it's an emotional breakdown. Relationships fall apart. My health falls apart. Like I, things happen and I just go, man, if only I would have not snoozed it and paid attention to it, I could have paid attention to what had to be done. I could have reprogrammed it. Now, I'm going to talk today about how we do that intentionally, not when things go crazy, because you either expand or you elevate on demand or when crap hits the fan. And I want to talk about how to program on demand, not when crap hits the fan, because if we do when that takes place, you're way behind the ball. But there's ways to actually do this. And it feels just like a computer, because what does it mean? Well, computer goes, OK, in that hour 36, I have to download information. I got to wait for the download. Then I got to have the computer verify and authenticate all the stuff it does. And then eventually what happens is I got to sit back and I got to upload it into life. Now, what this looks like in our life is sitting back and going, let me hear the things that I need to hear. Not what I want to hear, what I need to hear. Because every single one of us, if we were to sit down with the people in our life and say, hey, I need you to tell me things about me that I have not you know, been open to hearing before or you've been apprehensive to tell me, tell me what that is. They'll tell you, you'll download that stuff. And then part of it's like your wife says, you know, you, you don't spend enough time um, with me and, and I feel like I'm not getting enough attention and you don't communicate well. Okay, great. It's a download. Sometimes it's hard for people to hear. The upload's even harder. I'm going to spend time focusing on this. I'm going to, I'm going to allocate energy there. And it's a little bit weird and wonky. I feel like it's not who I am to do it yet, but I got to do that. It's how we reprogram. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.
walk it by yourself. Walk it by yourself. To the right, to the right, to the right, the right, the right. To the left, to the left, to the left, the left, the left. Now kick, now kick, now kick, now kick, now walk it by yourself. Walk it by yourself and do the Cupid shuffle. Now let me see you do the Cupid shuffle. Now let me see you do the kiss your boy Cupid. See you feed a out of D. Mr. Fat on the track, got another kid in D. him down rather better on that occasion but he's still in there good morning guys top 10 rules for success today robert kiyosaki in his last page um identifies his 10 rules for success and the one that stands out for me today is number one experience makes you smarter and then he goes on to talk about good debt versus bad debt and the value of education and understanding how to use it you see most of us view debt as a bad thing we don't want to be in debt we want to know that we are in the green column so to speak that we're moving forward we're progressing that we don't owe anything we're not falling behind but robert kiyosaki shares with us his wisdom of changing our mindset and changing the way we look at that because he gives his experience when he first, uh, or when he was starting out, he bought property, he bought commercial buildings, and he put nothing down, um, and he had debt, but every month that money would grow because he invested in something that was going to make his money grow. I hope this helps everyone. Have a great day. I've always looked at it about putting myself in the shoes of another person and asking a simple question. Can I help this person? Can my product help them? From the time I was 12 years old, selling garbage bags door to door and just asking a simple question. Do you use garbage bags? Do you need garbage bags? Well, let me save you some time. I'll bring them to your house and drop them off to, you know, streaming. Um, why do we need streaming when we have TV and radio? Well, you can't get access to your TV and radio everywhere you go. So we kind of break down geographic and physical barriers and, you know, cost plus drugs, you know, what's the product that we actually sell we sell trust in a simplistic approach we buy drugs and sell drugs but we add transparency to it and bringing transparency to an industry is is a differentiation and it helps people hey it's Evan Carmichael and I watch these videos every day because I need them for motivation being around successful entrepreneurs every morning helps me believe that I can do great things too it's like your morning coffee but for your goals kickstarting your day with a blast of positivity so here is a challenge for you. Try watching one video every morning for the next 30 days. And let's find out together if they help you do great things too. If you're in, leave a hashtag believe in the comments below so I can celebrate with you. So today let's get some incredible motivation from the one and only Mark Cuban, believe. I guess a good question to ask, are you born with it? Or can you develop it? Oh, you can definitely develop it. Yeah, I mean, because selling garbage bags door to door was easy, right? Because like, 12 year old mark going hi my name is mark do you use garbage bags you know what the answer is going to be right can i just drop them off for you you know once a week whenever you need them you just call and i'll bring them down sure so that was easy but i'm sure you've been rejected oh yeah of course not everybody says yes what's your what was your percentage i don't remember but it's pretty close to 100 oh, percent. okay never <laughs> so that's why you don't remember <laughs> yeah right because who's going to say no to a 12 year old kid yeah, who's sure. going to save time and money but you know typically in my career where i've started companies it's 
to do something that other people aren't doing, whether it was connecting PCs and to local area networks and at micro solutions. And, you know, the salesmanship was walking into a company and just saying, look, talk to me and I can help you improve your productivity and your profitability. Is that important to you? And the answer is obviously always yes. And then the question is, can I do the job and can I do it cost effectively? And so you didn't have to be a born salesperson to be able to ask those questions, but you have to be able to be willing to put in the time to learn that business. And yeah, that's the hardest part. But I'm sure there's a skill thing to it too. in like how you solve the puzzle of communicating with a person and convincing them. Yeah. I mean, there's skill from the perspective that I read like a maniac. Then like now you can give me an example of any type of business and it'll take me two seconds to figure out how they make money and how I can make them more um, productive. And I think that's probably my biggest skill, being able to just drill down to what the actual need is, if any. And then, you know, from there being able to say, well, if this is what this company does and this is what their goal is, how can I introduce something new that they haven't seen before? And is that a business that I can create and make money from? Wow. Key to success is agility. Yeah. You got to always be willing to learn because always changes. Yeah. Like my dad, you say you don't live in the world you were born into. Right. Right. I mean, what? Especially I, now, it's going so fast. Yeah, and like iPhone was what two thousand seven, so mm -hmm. sixteen. Mm -hmm. So if you're older than sixteen, you lived in a world with no iPhones. Right. Right. Yep. And you, you know, no wireless broadband. Mm -hmm. So um, stuff always going to be changing, which means you got to always be learning. Because if you're not learning, it's it doesn't matter. You're stuck. Yeah. You're right. stuck. And that's where, you know, and if you're learning and you don't change, then it's on you for not being agile. Right. right? So I, like I tell curiosity, loving to learn and being agile. If you're those three things, you're going to find a way. You read something in the, in the in articles like the market's changing. Streamers are spending less. Blizzard. What are we going to do? That's part of our, you know. Oh, I know that. I no, guess you know scary. That. Yo, it's I scary. scary. You get scared. It's like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> like, I don't want to leave the house. Like, what do I do now? What do yeah. I do now? That yes, is yes. the flip side. Oh, that you have to power through those. But that's what makes a great entrepreneur great. Yeah. It's a competition, right? You know, sometimes they run a play, you don't expect them to play, to exactly. run, right? And so it's like, oh, I mean, I can't tell you how many times in my life that stomach is just dropped. It's dropped. Dropped. But it doesn't stop. That it doesn't, doesn't stop. stop. That it fear does not stop, right? Because now you're at the next level. Yes. And you're always looking around going, okay, well, who's, who's here now? And then you have that imposter syndrome, right? I still get that. It's just like, oh, look at the people in this room. Why, Why am I here? Why me? <laughs> and in sports, it, it's actually... It's hard, it's almost impossible, but it's still easier yes. in business because there's always a new season. There's a new season. I was to be honest. Right? There's always a new season. And somebody ages out. Yeah. Right? They're gone. Michael's yes. still not playing, right? Yeah. No one plays forever. Yeah. Um, but in business, there's still Warren Buffett doing there's his still, thing. McDonald's still, is still here, Google's right? still, still here. Still some, yes, and you're still competing. You know, and I, you know, I have all these stupid sayings that I use to like motivate myself. It's like when you run with the elephants, there's the quick and the dead, yep. right? And so if, if you're agile and you're quick and you're learning and you're curious, you can beat the big guys, right? They're easier to beat. But once you get there, like you were saying, man, you look around and you just wait. Now I'm dealing with the real players, right? <laughs> now <laughs> now it's the, the power boys, play, yeah, with the big boys, right? And then even when you're the big boy sometimes, right? You don't want to be the big boy. No. The amount of change we're going to see over the next five years, 10 years, will dwarf everything that's happened over the last 30. We
magical. It's in the air, it's in my blood, it's rushing on. I don't need no reason, don't be control. I'll fly so high, no ceiling when I'm in my zone. Cause I got that sunshine in my pocket, got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. Ooh, I can't take my eyes off of it, moving so phenomenally. Boom, on not the way we rock it, so don't stop, stop, stop. I'm Two good chances in the first half. No mistake here. Good morning, guys. All right, I want to share a funny story with you today. This made me laugh when I saw it. Um, this is from Evan Carmichael. You guys know I'm a big fan. He's a mentor for me. And uh, when I went to his last... Uh, a filming session and uh, he showed uh, myself and uh, another uh, young lady that was there um, his painted nails as a way of showing and those of you that follow him will know the story anyhow but he's got these painted na nails right now and it's not something he felt comfortable doing but he did it anyway and he was trying to prove to himself and to everyone help everyone understand you got to get out of your comfort zone but when I first saw it firsthand and he showed me and I looked at it, I thought, wow, that looks funny. But then I, and I, I was laughing because I thought, good for him and amazing in terms of the inspiration for me. Once we get uncomfortable, actually, we can have a lot of fun with it because we can laugh about it. So, you know, that's one of the big things for us to grow and be on this path of infinite mind wealth. Have a great day, everybody. We went from automating pen and paper, right, with spreadsheets, to connecting PCs into local area networks to, right. you know, connecting them, connecting people to locally, other. yeah, locally, right, to connecting networks to get the internet, to getting the network effect of communicating people globally. But now we're introducing machine intelligence, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, neural networks, etc. So, and what that enables is the automation of automation. Right, and so the people who were writing software, particularly at the lower end, unless you you are doing right. these advanced things, they're gone. Right, the people that because the software is writing itself, and so it's doing itself. Right, it's just math. Programmer back in the day, so when I was writing code, it was the algorithms were if this then that, right, X or whatever it may be, right. right? But you had to guess, right? You had to use your your best instance, and then it got smarter and smarter and smarter, and libraries to do bigger and better things. All that is being automated. And so now you have to know how to use that stuff. So either software works for you or you work for software. And once the software takes over, you're gone. Right? So unless you understand that, you don't understand that the nature of work is changing. The nature of employment is going to change. And from a business, from a stock perspective, if you're in the Fortune 500, um, if you're an S&P 500 company, if you're in the Dow 30, right, if you're one of the bigger companies, you already know this. And in talking to a lot of these big companies, they know their workforce is 
you know, and given the supply and demand of stocks, the supply is shrinking right. and the demand is going up just as the economy grows. That's probably good news for stocks over the long term, but it's bad news for employment and it's bad news for people who are disrupted. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight our favorite lessons from the video that will inspire you to remember what you learned today and actually apply them. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Love your life, right? You know, find the things that you can enjoy. Be curious. You don't have to have all the answers when you're 12, 15, I get emails from 13, 15 year old kids, right? What do Saying, I do? What do I do, right? <laughs> I, you know, I feel like I'm being held back. I'm like a 15, you feel like you're being <laughs> held back. Um, but just be curious because you don't have to have the answers. You don't have to know what you're gonna be when you grow up. I, I'm a tr hardcore believer that everybody has something that they're really, really, really good at. That could be world-class great, every single human being on this planet. And the hard part is just finding what that is. And in, in some places having resources to enable it. Um, but be curious so you can find out what it is. I didn't take a technology, I took one technology class in, in college Fortran programming and I cheated on it, right? <laughs> I, I mean, it wasn't until I got a job at Mellon Bank and I started learning how to program in this thing called Ramus, this, this script the computing language that I realized, oh, this is interesting to me and I like it. And that's what got me, you know, a job selling software and, and the, you know, going on from there. You just don't know what that's going to be until you go out and experience different things. So for anybody young out there listening, you know, enjoy your life, find things to smile about, be curious, read, watch, ex you know, expose yourself to as many different ideas as you can because something's gonna click at some point. You may be 15, you may be 25, you may be 55, but it can happen. Do you reach a point where, I mean, money-wise, it's what's another zero or another- it's not change anything. Yeah, yeah. So, you, so, so for you, it's just about per personal interest, uh, deter so or determination, ambition, or, or is part of you like, I'm good. Like I don't need anything no, new it, or anything more. Being competitive, right? Business yeah. is the most competitive sport in the world. Right, right. Right. You see it. You know. Oh, who's coming in to be the next barstool? How often do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Right. Pat McAfee doing his own thing now is part of us. Right? You, Pat. Pat. You now can go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it, it's competitive, and so mm -hmm. that's why you come to work every day. So it's competitive. But I'm in a position now where it's not about my next. Oh, that's why we started CostPlusDrugs.com. Mm -hmm. Right. So, we're literally up the pharmacy industry. Right. I mean, we're having meetings where I'm just going, oh. Shit. If this works, it's like we're changing people's lives. It, it, are, yeah, are you thinking legacy stuff? I yeah, mean, you already sure. have like a sports legacy, but yeah, like but if no, you were sure. if you were to be known as the guy who made pharmaceuticals available at the, right the guy price, who everybody. changed the pharmaceutical industry, yeah. right? The guy who changed healthcare. Yeah, that's, big. that's huge. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like having people come up to me now or like, oh yeah, I was paying six thousand dollars a month because I lost my thing and I was going to have to sell my house, and now I pay sixty one dollars. Jeez, you know, Christ. like literally people crying on me, crying. Yeah. Like they might cry when the Mavs lose a game yeah. <laughs> or we win a championship, but like yeah. every, not every day, but every week I'm, I'm hearing from somebody about how you changed my life. And what, what exactly are you doing? Like, like so subsidizing cost, it somehow? So costplusdrugs.com, <clears throat> um, what we do is when you go to our site, if you take, if, if you're look, having to get a prescription, right? So you put in to Dilafil, which is generic Cialis, right? Mm -hmm. And normally you were going to hymns or whatever and you were paying one dollar a pill, right? And you mm -hmm. need your your um, generic Cialis. Like on our site, you can get ninety pills for you know eight bucks plus shipping and handling. Wow! And so what we'll do is we'll show you our cost, which is you know let's say six seven dollars, um, and we'll show you our markup fifteen percent. And then if you buy it mail order, it's you know an extra ten bucks for shipping and handling. And so you pay your eight bucks plus shipping and handling, but you know exactly what our cost is. And so we were the first ones to ever be transparent with drug pricing. As an entrepreneur, I wake up with that feeling every day that something's on the line. Like it could all go wrong tomorrow. Well, I, I, mean, yeah, I kind of that's like, the great you part, still right? like that. Oh hell yeah, you get that. You get that that juice in you, right? Where you get so amped up, right? Yeah. So you're preparing for something, you're learning, and then. When you come to that point where you think you found something yeah. that gives you an edge, 
right? So good. That's when you just, just like, that's like making the game winning shot, even though you haven't finished anything yet, right? You know, where it's just like, you get so fired up and it's like, well, what motivates you to keep on going? It's like, I want to keep on kicking ass because yes. that feeling of getting that juice going and getting excited, that never goes away. What's made you successful? I have all these stupid little sayings that I tell myself all the time or tell employees or whatever. And one of them is the one thing in life that you can control is your effort. And I always work my ass off, always. You know, first in, last out. I went seven years when I started my first company without a vacation. Um, I lived like I was broke because I was, and obviously today I still do. Um, yeah, I don't know why me in terms of why I'm here and somebody else isn't, but I've, I've always just tried to bust my ass and be smart about it and always and keep learning and trying to improve. How often do you, do you uh, educate yourself a day? Like, is it like an hour? Like Every day, every minute, everything I do is about learning more because that's the only way I can kick your ass, you know? It's not, <laughs> I'm not going to out-athletic you, right? Um, it's not about my basketball IQ. It's about my, my business IQ, right, and technology and business. And everything's always changing. If, you know, five years ago, if someone would ask me about artificial intelligence, I wouldn't know, right? Yet AI is the most important part of, of technology and really business going forward. So if I'm going to be an effective investor, an effective um, mentor, an effective, you know, um, operator of businesses, you know, even with the maps, I got to understand AI. Because, you know, like with the Mavericks, when, you know, when you talk about analytics, it's changed so dramatically, even over the last five years, going from, you know, different types of things per and, you know, advanced RPM and all these different metrics for basketball to how do you implement artificial intelligence and pose estimation and computer vision? And how do you understand all that stuff to make the right decisions for the max? And so if I want to be in a position to make those decisions and not just ask somebody else to do it, I got to learn it. And so I put in hours, I do tutorials, I take little online classes and it doesn't make me an expert. It's not like I'm going to say, you know, I could get a job if I needed to running AI or running um, tech for a big company. I couldn't, but I understand all the concepts and understand the issues and how to apply them to business. So if you're going to be good at anything, you got to stay ahead of the game. And business is the ultimate sport. You know, I, I used to say it to Dirk and now I say it to Luca, you know, it's like, dude, you know, you play 48 minutes, you know, a 48 minute game, you practice a couple hours, you go home and you relax and you play, you know, you play Call of Duty, you know, business is 24 by seven. I'm going every day because there's some 16 year old kid out there trying to kick my ass in one of my companies and it ain't going to happen. Right. And so I'm that competitive and I'm that, you know, I work that hard at learning to try to stay ahead of the game. When instead of just holding on to all of the stock that you got from Yahoo, mm -hmm. you did what we call a collar, you collared it. So, yeah. so you hedged it. So. Tell everybody what went through your mind, because that was a big bet with huge dollars, right? Yeah. And it, it was a. Pre, it, it was, was actually a, pretty simple. So, you know, hedging stock. If, you know, Yahoo paid us in Yahoo stock, and, you know, I had I, was smart enough to recognize, I guess, that what goes up could go down, but it wasn't that big a step because I was worth more than a billion dollars. How much did I need, right? So I was telling everybody, just find me a way to hedge it. So in the event, look, if the stock price goes up and I leave something on the table, so be it, right? But <laughs> I like that B next to my name and I wanted to keep it. And, and so <laughs> I sold calls, bought puts, and effectively hedged it so that by the time, so there was a period of time from when I'd done that and the internet stock market kept on going up and, and I told people I'd hedged it and Goldman Sachs, the company had told people what I'd done. And I remember going on CNBC, the business channel, and then the guy going, boy, don't you feel stupid that Yahoo stock has kept on going up and you had this hedge? And I'm like, yeah, I feel so stupid riding around my G5 that I bought <laughs> online. You know? and, and it was just like, not to sound like a crazy, greasy, greedy capitalist, but yeah, and it was like, I just don't want to screw it up. And so I hedged it and then the internet bubble burst and I was fully protected and actually even made a little bit more money. And, you know, middle, um, you know the motto that the, the you know, what I learned was you just don't need to be greedy. You know, I was very, very blessed. I was very fortunate. 
look, I didn't plan the internet stock market to go up, and I didn't plan it to go down, so I was lucky in terms of scale, and I didn't want to screw it up, yeah. and so I hedged. Raising money always seems to be like the big thing to entrepreneurs coming in. Well, if I can only raise this money, raising money isn't an accomplishment, it's an obligation. Our power to determine that's determine a nation who we really are. Growing our minds, our bodies, and our energy in the gym of life. Everywhere we go, everywhere we are. greatest gift. You have your presence. And with that presence, right here, right now, you can take it, keep using it wherever you go. To get out of your mind, sometimes your mind is playing tricks, lying to you, telling you to be afraid, telling you to give in to fear, to anxiety, to stress to become sad and depressed. No, 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 that's a lie. We are determined nation. We're made of truth, like everyone in this universe. Truth principles. And those truth principles, that stuff you're made of, I'm made of, that determination, never ends. That always chooses courage. Sorry, that always determines courage, determines faith, determines love, positivity, being kind, generous, being grateful. That's what we were all born to do. With that, we can overcome anything our mind tries to do to us. Don't forget, you are the boss of your mind, and your mind is the boss of your body. And so if you control your mind, you will control your body, and more importantly, feelings, because your feelings are connected to your thoughts, and you can control your thoughts. So if you can control your thoughts, your mind, you can determine to be your true, happy, infinitely intelligent self all the time, not just now.